Welcome to this week's Ask GCN Anything Mechanical Special Edition, where we answer questions that you've sent in. I'm going to waste no time, I'm going to get straight to it. First up is a question from Jim Watkinson. Grease or copper slip on threads or seat posts? Well, great question Jim. It totally depends on the material and also the part that you're fitting. For instance, if you're fitting carbon fibre, mostly you're going to use carbon fibre grip. Titanium, aluminium bolts, normally copper slip or anti-seize, that will help. However, it's more in depth than that and this video with Sai explains what and where you're going to use each product. Fibre grip is another really easy one. Use it on any carbon part that requires clamping in place, even when carbon is being clamped in alloy. So think seat post and frame and think stem and handlebars. To use it, just apply it to one surface only. So post not frame and bars and not stem. Next up is this question from Cullen Coap. Cullen asks, how often should I be cleaning my daily commuter? Thanks for the message. To be honest, there's no right answer, but there is a wrong one. The wrong answer is that you don't check it at all. Personally, after my ride, I ride 70K to and from work. That's a round trip, not each way. Uh, at the end of the day, I check my tires, I check my brake pads, just to make sure there's nothing lodged in there that the next morning when I wake up is gonna prevent me from getting to work on time. Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. However, at the end of the week, normally on Saturday morning, I check over the bike, I give it a degrease, I clean it up, lube it, then I'm good to go again. That takes around half an hour, so it's half an hour of my time well spent. To find out what you can do in that half an hour, check it out with Sai. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the wheels, drop the front one out, and then start by cleaning the frame and the front forks that you couldn't get to whilst the wheels in. Pay particular attention as well to the brake calipers. Now I turn my attention to the front wheel, I make sure on a thorough clean that I'm particularly careful about cleaning the side walls. Black wall tyres, not so much of a problem, but if you've got a skin wall tyre, your bike is never going to look clean if you've got dirty side walls. So give it a proper going over. Right, it's time for the quick fire round. I've gone aero, I'm trying to break a record. Here we go. First up, Matthew Dawson. How to put on new shoe cleats. Simple Matthew. Grab yourself a marker pen or a sharpie, draw around the old cleat, remove the old cleat, put the new one on using that marker pen as a template, do them up, job done. Next up, Reza Praboa. Can I remove the front derailleur of my Ultegra Di2 group set and turn it into a one by setup? Yes, you can. You'll need a, a narrow wide chain ring on the front. Uh, you'll probably need uh, to shorten your chain as well and possibly, and only possibly, some sort of chain guide as well to make sure it stays on, but that's not essential. Uh, next up from Rod Leonard Atienza, um, can I use WD-40 as a lube for the chain? Quite a beginner here, I say no, Cy Richardson, he'll say yes. Uh, next up, Sledge's Hammer, Sledgehammer. Uh, ask GCN, should I buy a road bike? Yes, 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 yes. Go down to your local shop, tell them I sent you, you'll get special service, guaranteed. Now we've got the Nexus Gaming. Can you use an 11 speed chain on a single speed bike or a fixed gear bike? Good question. Providing you're using a 3 32nd sprocket and chain ring, not a problem at all. If you're using an eighth inch, like a track or BMX sprocket, forget it, won't work. Next up, and the final one, a cheap carbon frame or a top aluminium frame. Go for the top aluminium frame. It'd be a livelier ride, probably be lighter. You're gonna get more bang for your buck. There we are. <sighs> Tell you what, I think I broke some speed records there. So I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Next up is a question from Bobby Dazzler. Hell of a name that, Bobby. Uh, how to get stripped Allen bolts out? Great question. Firstly, one of the most important things is to actually try and prevent this in the first place. So get yourself uh, some decent tools, maybe a torque wrench, the correct grease as well, or anti-seize, and then you're halfway there. Make sure you fit those parts correctly. If you, I mean, obviously in your case, Bobby, your, your bolts are stripped, mate. So. What we're going to have to do is go over to Sai, where he's got some great tips to get those bolts out. Next up, we're going to try a Torx key. Now, this is a little bit random, I know, but we've had loads of you suggesting it, and I've also heard really good things about it. Basically, a Torx key is a six-pointed star as opposed to a hexagon. And so the slightly different shape can mean that you get a little bit more purchase with the bolt. 
However, you are going to need to increase the size of the Torx key relative to the Allen key. So in this case, we've got a 3 mm Allen bolt, a T15 that would correspond to it size-wise. So you have to use a slightly bigger size, the T20, and then obviously it doesn't fit, so you will need to whack it in there with a hammer. And finally, Solve Horpstad wants to know how to fit internal cables. Well, Solve, we're going to try and solve this for you. I've known people who fish around for hours on end trying to get those cables out of the frame and just no luck at all. Park Tool even make a special tool for this, the IR1 tool. Uh, personally, I use this. It's an old brake cable, outer brake cable even, that I've expanded. So I've sort of unraveled it a little bit and then I pick out the cables that way. Hopefully that will solve your problem. If not, Cy Richardson, he's here again. He's been very busy this episode and he's got some hacks for you on how to get those cables out. Firstly then, the inner cable sheath. Now you can likely pick these up from your local bike shop and it is basically a little plastic tube that is just bigger in diameter than your inner cable. So with that in mind, you see that you can thread it over your cable and then through the internal part of the frame before it pops out the other end. Then, leaving that in place, you can then remove the cable, but then that, obviously, will be the guide for the new one. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's mechanical special Ask GCN Anything. Remember to leave your questions for us in the comments down below or across all forms of social media using the hashtag TalkBack. Do remember to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your mates. And to subscribe to the Global Cycling Network, click there, just on the logo. And for two more great videos, how about four bits of retro tech, click just down here. And for the latest GCN show, just down here.